Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. I am OG Akbe. And I'm Rafa Yosei. Good to see you, OJ. Good to see you, too. <laughs> Great. Although mental health awareness is slowly becoming a mainstay of the contemporary media, suicide is stopping the chart as a phenomenal killer. Suicide are calls throughout the world, affecting individuals of all nations, cultures, genders, and classes. And in fact, statistics show that the countries with the highest suicide rate in the world are incredibly diverse. So joining us now to discuss this is multiple award-winning, uh, can I call you a celebrity, <laughs> uh, neuropsychiatrist, a mental health advocate with over 15 years' experience. In fact, she's the only Nigerian with a 10 piece. Uh, physician, psychiatrist, psychologist, psychotherapist, practitioner, publisher, professor in the making, uh, purpose-driven, <laughs> passionate about God and life. I could go on and on and on. Very good friend of the family and of the house, uh, Dr. Mimunat Kondri. Great to have you, man. How are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and yeah. thank you for joining us today. Ah, thank you, too. Great to have you. So let's just go straight to it. Uh, a lot of people will say, Straight off the bat, we didn't use the help suicide and suicide cases in Nigeria. Maybe these cases were not recorded mm. over time. But now it's mainstay. We heard about the third Mainland Bridge issue a couple of uh, months ago. Mm -hmm. And that issue was very startling because a medical doctor was involved, actually took his life. So you think a man of medicine should be able to know how to conduct and you know, master his emotions. But it goes across board. It's everywhere. Some will say because of the economy. Can you just talk us through the antecedents of this in Nigeria? Um, it's still not properly recorded. Um, so according to the World Health Organization, they've actually put a um, uh, motion in place that all countries should have um, a national directory where death by suicide should be recorded. Okay. We don't have, yeah, we don't have that. So we still don't have that kind of record where um, any death you hear will be recorded, any hospital that um, somebody is brought in, we normally call it uh, um, um, BID, brought in dead, mm. just to confirm that the person actually died. So all that recorded, so it should be in all the primary health care centers where that directory is. So we don't have that. So we don't still have the full st statistics to show in Nigeria uh, we have 10 deaths per month or thereabout. We still just know that we have dead by suicide every 40 seconds which mm. is a global st statistic. So that mm. meaning over 800 to 1 million people die by suicide on an annually basis. Mm. And of course, in Nigeria, we, are, we do know we are faced with a lot of challenges. And these challenges, are they changing? Or are they increasing? Are we facing more hardship? These are the things we should actually be discussing, because these challenges have been there from our great grand folks to our fathers to mm. us, and maybe probably to our children. Because we still don't have good health care, no good roads, light is even becoming more and more difficult to have. Mm. So these challenges are there. And now people are all clamoring, oh, there's an increase in the rate of suicide. And I'm like, I don't think there's an increase. Mm. One, we are becoming more aware of suicide cases. Two, it's more of copycat suicide rather than the suicide cases. Because while, what leads to copycat suicide is when one or more Cases of suicide have been publicly, you know, it has been publicized you know, in such a way that details that are not supposed to be in the general public are known. What are these details? Because some people, so we in the media, because you're throwing the baton to us, we in the media <laughs> will say we're just reporting what's happening. What are, yeah. But you're not saying someone, this, yes. this is inspiring so all the I give you a, a, I give you a typical example. Mr. XY went to... Auntie Ungazi's shop to buy three bottles of sniper. Getting home at night, it streamlined it life, and it was taking two bottles. And then in the morning, somebody was trying to get to him. In the morning, they found out that he has taken two bottles. Two bottles were empty. It was too explicit. Well, it mean then means that people will begin to identify with the fact that, oh, you can actually use Sniper and it's easier and, and it's faster. And, and, and for the sake of the show, Sniper is an insecticide and that's Exa a problem. Okay, it's yes, not yeah. a suicide. It's not suicide. Exactly. Exactly. Which brings me to my um, question with that insecticide. Why is it so readily available to especially the youth of our country? Because the statistics show that they are the ones that are, you know, dying more uh, lately now. 
Um, leading cause of suicide um, um, among the 15 to 20, 29 years is suicide. Yes. Hmm. So, the and they, yeah, so, and they are, the, most of them fall within this range, right? 15 to 29, good. And then, insecticide is among the top most um, um, uh, ways of taking his or uh, anybody taking his or her own life. So, insecticide, firearms, dead by hanging. So, it's just because and, we. And is it because this particular insecticide, you know, because most of our insecticides are aerosols. Exactly. Is it because this one particularly is not an aerosol? Is and, and, and it's very um, concentrated. And truthfully, it may not all be sniper. People are just using it because that is a name that has been medially, will I say, publicized that it is. It may be something else. It may be the old name we used to have, the mm. tap tap or mm. something like mm. that. So it, that is the name that has been there. So anybody that just comes and says, oh, I took an insecticide, they just use the name sniper so loosely. There was a case of a, a young boy, a UNN boy, who yeah. actually um, posted a picture of that insecticide on his Facebook, on his Instagram. And that you was know, one case that could have been salvaged. I'm so sorry about that. That was one preventable suicide case that could have been helped, that boy. How because so? everything about what he had on his social media page was screaming for help. Mm. So how do you think that you could have helped if you were in a Good. position so to? Good, if so if we're in a position to help, if I was maybe his Facebook friend or whatever, is to reach out to him. Reach out to him, not just via the phone, reach out to him on face-to-face -face and ask him what, if I was a friend. But as a practitioner, what I would have done, if for any reason somebody had brought it to my notice, is to look for my affiliate in, in that place and say, okay, this is a situation. Look at all the warning signs and all the red flags and, and this boy is screaming for help. Because most times people die from suicide, they don't actually want to die. They just want to escape from the pain. They just want the pain to go away. And the pain is depression, mm. and right? Uh, so maybe, no. maybe. Mm. It may be depression, it may be drug abuse, it may be cause unknown. It mm. may be a chronic debilitating physical illness. So for many reasons why people may want to take their life. So that boy will have been, maybe they will reach out to him, cancel him, get his uh, family support system. And no, maybe, because suicide... What, what we know is that it's 100% preventable. Okay, so we'll look at the statistics. In Nigeria alone, about 60 million people suffer from depression, depression correct? <laughs> mm. And yeah. yes. apparently it's about 250 psychiatrists to these 60 million people. Sad. And most likely we are going to have another batch leave in the next two, three to six months, not less than 10 to 15 psychiatrists for mm. greener pasture. You wouldn't blame them. Um, then I used to always say when I hear somebody has left the country, I'm like, mm, why? Who will look after those that are available? It's not right. But these days I sit down because they, they tell me reasons why they are leaving. They are telling me, look, how much do they pay us? We're always going on strike. What is the future of our children? And um, it's big. You know, when you keep hearing one thing over and over again, even if you're not interested, you're like, hmm, really? But I look, I'm the kind of person, I, I don't die here, I live here. No, I'm here to stay. So the truth is that people will keep living. But, but, but another factor here is how viable is the market? Because, you see, when we yeah. say people should get training in psychiatry and things like that, how viable is market? Because I have a lot of friends in psychiatry, like it's on Iron <laughs> Dupu, amongst many other people, and all, other things like that. How viable is the market? How many people are calling psychiatry? How profitable is the practice? Because in the end, the practice looks like a labor of love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Nigeria, it may not be viable because of the stigma attached to people living with mental illnesses. And we have a lot of quackery in the system. So rather than people going to the right places, to the right people and doing the right thing, they rather go to the babalawos, um, malams, all manner of people to take care of their issues. Mm -hmm. So yes, in Nigeria, it may not be viable because people would not ordinarily get up and say, I want to talk to a shrink or I want to speak to a psychiatrist. So for us, yeah, it's more of labor of love, it's more of humanity, service to humanity, it's more of our passion. So, but we keep pushing. For me, it's a movement. We mm -hmm. keep pushing and create that mental health literacy. Because when people are literate about mm -hmm. their mental health, the stigma automatically will begin to reduce. Okay, mm. so just for the benefit of our viewers, you know, you, can you give us a scope of these mental 
illnesses that we uh, people face because I know that one of them is autism and I yes. had no idea <laughs> so mm. autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder so mm. generally we don't want to say it's a mental illness it's a neuro so sometimes women will come but and does it fall underneath yeah, or just under mental health, mental um, health and mental illnesses, but it's not like it's a mental illness, it's a neurodevelopmental. So it even occurred in the child before he or she was born, more in boys than in girls, and it's quite common. And then, um, and now some statistics actually show the older the man is, the likelihood of him having a child with autism. Oh. Yes, so those would have been waiting to build a house in Banana Island, have um, Range of Virgin before and whatever, they before they get married, they should listen to this right now, because okay. have your children before they start having issues, you start having issues with children with neurodevelopmental illnesses. So aside that, we have the anxiety and depression that top the rank of the commonest mental illnesses worldwide. And, and it's not different from here in Nigeria. And that is why we are, we are not saying, oh, suicide, because depression is highly linked to suicide. It's when you feel hopeless, you feel worthless, you feel, you feel trapped, you feel nothing is going for you, that you want to even say, look, I'm, I, I don't need, nobody needs me. I, I want to take my life. So anxiety, depression is still there. We have the bipolar. Mm. Affective disorder. disorder. So, yeah. so, and that is a spectrum. That is a, um, um, when people become manic or depressed or whichever one they, they, they have. And of course, some of these severe mental illnesses like schizophrenia. Yeah, let's talk about schizophrenia. <laughs> because there are a lot of people in this country that are schizophrenic and they don't know. No. There are a lot of people in this country that may be living with schizophrenia and not schizophrenic. Okay, that's I, labeling. Okay, that's labeling. Okay. So, I apologize <laughs> for that. There are a lot of people that may be living with schizophrenia. And they don't know. And most of the spiritual mm. problems people claim they have might be a case of schizophrenia and they don't know. Mm -hmm. So how do you draw the line between overt spirituality or piety and schizophrenia? So good, because um, cases of schizophrenia is just 1% to 2%. So it's still very... Still very low. Relatively low. But you still very low. Yes, you see, no, even if we, <laughs> we still have some data that shows that it's not just madness everywhere. So depression, anxiety, substance abuse, top the rack among if we have 60 million Nigerians. Schizophrenia is just one to two percent. But and there's a thin line anyway. So there are different types of schizophrenia, paranoid, residual, and all that. The thin line now is that. When somebody hasn't been functional, and when all of us look back in our family system, we find that there's, there's, there's that auntie or that uncle or somebody in the family compound that w never really worked in his or her lifetime, that wasn't really disturbing, was just there, not going to office, not coming back, and we never really knew what was wrong. That person could have had schizophrenia, and his level of functioning deteriorated to that level where he cannot really do anything. Mm. So somehow when they ask that, is there any family of mental illness? We are very glad, ah, no, nobody, we don't have anybody with mm. any. But that uncle that everybody used to say, leave him alone, no, or leave her alone, no, or she's stubborn, mm. could be that kind of a person. And what were the ways we could manage that person? Because there's what we call pathway to care. Mm -hmm. Most times they don't come to the hospitals. They go to the babalaos, they get them tired, let them flog the madness away from them. Mm. They get them to drink some kind of water every morning, under rain, on the sun. There's a, a big log of wood tied to them so that they will not escape. They are tied up in shackles. We saw all that. In my training in the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital for six good years, we saw people coming in chains, in shackles. But we don't institutionalize people anymore. We don't tie them in shackles. It's dehumanizing. And that is why we are advocating for the mental health bill to be turned into an act. Yeah, so no I'm, ha I'm happy you talked about that. We're going to come to schizophrenia, so you're okay. going to explain in detail for the yeah. sake of our listeners. But the mental health law mm. of the 1950s... That's a, is that the lunacy act. The, the lunacy oh act mm. of the late 50s still states that if somebody is said to be a lunatic, <laughs> lunatic. you should take, sell all his property mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and use it to take care of him. Which doesn't make sense. And it's still there till to today. Date. But uh, however, so, some so how, states are, have made some provisions to hmm. actually help that, to actually you know, provide a way to reform it and protect um, those it's individuals. Starting Lagos it's starting with Lagos So it's only yes. Lagos that has done that. And, 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 I mean, we're talking the other day about 12 states not even signing the child right, right law. Uh -huh. So how about states okay. like in the northern Nigeria? So let's even talk through that. <laughs> so the truth is that 
this needs to be passed. So we are waiting for the ninth National Assembly, because right now the eight is rounding up, so there's no way you can do any hearing or anything. So the truth is that that needs to because why on earth? That is a vicious circle of poverty. Yeah. And it's going, to, it's, it's, it's going to cause a lot of rancor. It's going to cause a lot of problems. And not only that, you need to go to court. So for any, if a person is on admission, you need to go back to the court to get uh, approval. That person needs to still stay back in the hospital. So it's okay. We don't need that. And mm. once that is um, passed into law, we see a lot of changes. At least people on the street too will also get help. Because right now, anybody on the street is you on your own. All right, so let's talk about structure here. These people need help. Where do they go to get help? Because apparently there are mm. only eight federal psychiatric homes in, in Nigeria. Nigeria. I mean, and also the hospitals, while researching, I figured that there are no departments for um, psychiatric wards or things like that. Well, I like the fact that these uh, this, um, questions are coming up on board. Why? Because... Um, after the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, announced the budget and talked about 1%, mm. it's actually supposed to go to the primary health care. I'm like, okay, a doctor who is the Senate President, and I really hope this will be implemented. Truthfully, um, people don't need to go to psychiatric hospital, Yaba, or Aru, or Usilu, because that is a tertiary institution. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. The primary health care centers are supposed to be well-equipped enough where people can go, have a diagnosis, have their treatment. They even have, you know, for um, visit um, medication. It's only if the primary health care centers cannot, you mm. know, help, they, they refer over. But now everybody, the moment there's a problem, they are going straight to psychiatric mm. hospital. And that is not good enough. At least when I was there, we have a minimum of 10 to 15 new cases on a daily basis. That just shows that there are cases. Yaba has over 500 um, beds. And they are, most times they are always filled. So there are still not enough resources, mm. even if, because now we're talking about the structure, then the human resources to actually take care of them. Because everybody with a mental illness, the only doctors trained to make a diagnosis and make prescription are the psychiatrists. And now we're talking mm. about 250, 250 doctors, psychiatrists to 60 million Nigerians that are having mental illness. So that is mm. grossly inadequate. And of course, the centers are not really there. So only few teaching hospitals that have psychiatry need, and that's because they are... For teaching students. We, we, we'd like to thank you, Dr. Wimler, because <laughs> yeah. you know, we can continue on and on and on and no on like that. But thank you as always, and we keep uh, pushing And we're the glad that this. you're not one of those leaving our country. <laughs> no, <laughs> we live here. We live here. <laughs> She's here to stay.